With a, an offer on the table, should the RMT, do you think, have called off their rail strikes today? Well, we were told when Rishi Sunak took over as Prime Minister that we were going to have a more pragmatic, common-sense approach to government. But what is actually happening is he's doubling down on what his predecessors were doing, refusing to get round the table, refusing to engage properly with the trade unions. Uh, there is a deal there to be done. Uh, you can hear it in the language from all of the trade unions that are on, on, on strike. They want to do a deal. They want compromise, but they're being locked out of the negotiating room by the government. So, uh, you know, what we need to do is see clear and constructive dialogue happening and finding that middle ground. And that is the way that we're going to resolve these strikes. You say there's a deal there to be done. There, there is a deal currently on offer by Network Rail to RM, the RMT, for example. Uh, they say that would mean rises are between 9 and 14 per cent, more for those on lower salaries. Is it time for the RMT to accept that offer? Well, the RMT operates, like all trade unions, on a democratic basis, and they have to consult their members. Uh, you know, the executive consults the membership in order to determine whether or not the deal is acceptable. And, you know, that is a process that has to go on within the RMT. The, the broader point remains that a huge amount of time uh, and indeed money has been wasted uh, by the government's refusal to get around the table and negotiate with the trade unions in a constructive and grown up way. And, and we're paying the price for that. Commuters are paying the price for that. Um, the economy is paying the price for that. And uh, we really do need to see now a much more common sense, pragmatic approach from the government. Clearly, it is for the, the RMT to, to decide amongst their members whether they accept the offer. But I think a lot of people want to know where Labour stands on this. You put a lot of pressure on the government to, to, to enter talks and, and be constructive, as you say. But people want to know whether you think that the kind of offers that are being put to workers are reasonable or not. Are you able to say what is a reasonable offer for some of these strikers? Well, what a contrast between the grotesque profits that these oil and gas companies are making and many other companies and, and you know, CEOs of organisations paying themselves uh, huge bonuses right across uh, the economy. Uh, working people just want a fair share of... Uh, of so what is a fair share? Profit from, the economy that we, from the economy that we are that we see. And of course, we're seeing an economy that's been fundamentally neglected by government for 13 years. Uh, and we're, we're seeing the cost uh, of that coming through uh, every single day. So, uh, you know, the fair share is about a negotiation. It's a percentage uh, increase that actually helps to deal with the cost of living crisis, helps to deal with uh, runaway inflation uh, that we're seeing. Every, everybody knows when they go into negotiation, you don't get everything that you want, but you are also clear what your bottom line is. When we go into government, we will need to look at the books. We will inherit a terrible, terrible mess after 13 years of catastrophically shambolic government. Uh, we're going to have to fix that mess, look across the books, and of course, negotiate with trade unions when negotiations are necessary. We will go into those negotiations uh, with a hard-headed approach okay. that is uh, protecting the public finances, but is also recognising that working people deserve their fair share. OK, and, and it's clear that Labour doesn't, don't, don't want to outline exactly what they think that the, a fair share should be. But you mentioned um, energy giants and their profits. Let, let's talk a little bit about Shell. Uh, they reported their highest profits in their history yesterday, £32 billion. Now, the government has introduced a windfall tax that was increased and extended uh, by the Chancellor in the autumn statement. I mean, that now amounts, on top of uh, other taxes, corporation tax etc., to about 75%. Uh, Labour is still calling on the government to go further, isn't it? So, so what would a, a windfall tax under Labour look like? Well, of course, the government had to be dragged kicking and screaming to agree with the windfall tax. They spent months and months and months opposing uh, our plans and then ended up adopting them. So what we should at least be doing is backdating uh, the windfall tax to when Labour uh, introduced the idea in the first place. Uh, what we also need to do is see the loopholes being closed. So the oil and gas um, companies are being let off the hook um, through certain loopholes connected to investment being uh, offset against uh, their, their tax liabilities. That needs to stop as well. Labour's got a clear and detailed plan for doing that. Okay. And the government should adopt it straight away. Uh, on, on the closing of the, that loophole, as you say, it allows energy firms to reduce their payments if, if they go on and invest 
capital in new production. We heard from the Bank of England yesterday expressing real concern about growth in the economy. They said one of the real problems was low business investment. So don't we need to do everything to incentivise businesses to invest their money? Yeah, but don't forget that these are excess profits. These are the windfalls of war. As a direct result of Putin's barbaric invasion of Ukraine, the oil and gas companies are laughing all the way to the bank. And that cannot be allowed to continue. So we're not talking about uh, taxing the, the basic bottom line of these companies. We're taxing the excess profits that have been made as a direct result of the war. And they should be one-off taxes, which should only be in place until such time as the war is finished, which we really hope will be as soon as possible, and that the energy market goes back to uh, business as usual. So it's, it's those excess profits that need to be taxed properly. It is not right that these companies are benefiting directly from Putin's barbaric invasion of Ukraine. These are the windfalls of war, and they need to be taxed properly.